This skill is wound packing and wound irrigation. It's going to be done in two parts. So the first part, you're going to see me take the old dressing off, do an assessment, and then actually do the irrigation. And then we'll come back with the second part where we actually do the packing and putting the dressing on. Um, the first things you want to look at here is go to the chart. You should definitely have an order from the doctor to tell us what we're going to be packing it with, what we're going to be cleansing it with, and especially how often we're going to be doing it. It's important that the, the gauze that's inside the wound, because usually this is an open wound that's not approximated, it's healing by secondary intention. This wound usually is open and it's important that it heals from the inside out. What will happen is if we put the packing in and leave it for too long, it'll dry out and pull too much of the good tissue out with the bad tissue. Because the whole idea behind the wet to damp packing is that it'll dry just enough that we can pull the old tissue out when we change out the packing, not the good tissue. Um, what we're going to do right now, though, is go ahead and we check the chart. We look for the order, the change of dressing, what to pack it with, what to clean it with, how often we should be doing it. Most important to look how he's been tolerating, because this is Mr. Fay again, even though I just have a part of the body here. Um, it's important to take and look and see, do they need pain medication? Because this usually can be very painful. So you want to give them a pain medication and wait 30 minutes to an hour for it to kick in. Um, also, you want to look again at allergies, especially the latex and the tape allergies. Um, you also want to look at any contraindication on any of the dressings that we might be using. Um, once you've done that, then you can go ahead and you can take and come out and wash your hands. And what you want to do is get an irrigation um, basin and tray. It'll have a syringe and something to hold your water in. You want to get a bottle of normal saline. And you want to get an emma spacing, and you want to get something, usually a linen saver to put under them because it can get pretty, um, pretty wet under there. You also want to take and get a couple of 4 by 4s because you want to dry what we call the peri wound, and I'll show you what that is in just a little bit. And then you want to have some non-sterile gloves. All right, so we're going to go ahead. We've come down to the room. We've identified the patient. This is Mr. Fay. We've explained what we're going to do. We're going to provide different privacy here because of where it's, it's on the buttocks area, the coccyx area where we're going to be working. So we want to make sure and get privacy. Um, you definitely want to make sure and identify and check allergies. Okay? Now, once we've done that, then we can come on over and we'll get our non-sterile gloves on and we'll position the person on their side. If by chance they they uh, want to know a little bit about what's going on since this is on the back. We certainly can do some educating, and again, I may do some educating as we go along. Okay, again, we're going to pull the tape off, and you want to pull it towards the incision here, in this case, towards the opening. Again, we shouldn't have a lot of drainage. This is our secondary dressing. This is our primary dressings down here. Here's where we'll start seeing some of the drainage itself. Now, when you pick this up, be very gentle. You want it to debride by pulling out the dead tissue, but not the good tissue. Very gently, because sometimes this can really hurt the patient. Okay, again, I've assessed the drainage here, the color, the amount, any specific odor. You want to take and pull the glove, again, inside out, over top of that to contain all that drainage. And again, what I'm going to look at here, I can do Rita and salt here. It's just the approximated part, the A on the end of Rita, we would not be able to do. So we're going to look at redness. Pink is good, and reddish pink is very good. By fire engine red, usually it's a sign of infection. This part here is the peri wound outside, the peri wound. That we want to keep dry, and we want to keep that as good as we can. But we've got redness, we've got edema, we've got ecchymosis, and we've got drainage. We won't have the approximation with this. Salt, we've got the size, which we would take and measure. And usually we use it like the face of a clock, and we measure that way. Um, we've got the um, appearance, which is the reader minus the approximation. And we've got the location, and then the tolerance, and then the treatment. Okay, so that would be your assessment there of the wound itself. Now what we want to do, if they haven't got the linen savers under them, you want to make sure and put that under them. Most of the time we'll have another basin, not the same one they brushed our teeth with, a separate basin, and that we'll put here to try to catch some of the saline. Okay. We want to come over here and you want to go ahead, and when you open up your irrigation tray, it should be sterile. Though I must say, um, wounds that are... Um, Decubitus wounds, bed sores, decubitus ulcers, they are not considered sterile. They're considered chronic wounds. They're considered just a clean technique that we use with them. 
Now, what we want to do here when we reach in, I'm just going to grab the outside of this, not the inside, because the syringe itself on the outside doesn't have to be sterile, but the solution has to be sterile that we're going to be using. Because even though they're considered chronic wounds, we treat them here in the nursing program when you're checking off as sterile wounds to get you more practice. Okay, I'm going to go ahead, open the bottle after I palm the label of saline, upside down cap, and yes, it is a new bottle. Okay, go ahead and lift the bottle here. Then I can pick up here and pour my saline in. And you might want to put about a third of a thing of saline in, okay? And then put this back down. But don't have your hands touching down on the syringe. It's going to go back on the inside, okay? All right. Now, at this point, you don't have to put sterile gloves back on because what has to be sterile has to be the solution on the inside, okay? So I'm going to go ahead, though, and put this on. Before I do that, though, I want to talk to you a little bit about this. When you get ready to irrigate, you're probably going to splatter. So you need to have a face shield and a face mask, and if you think it's going to splatter a lot, even a gown to protect your scrubs. I'm not going to put on the face shield because I won't be able to talk to you if I do that. Okay? And since I'm going to take and do the irrigation, I am going to go ahead and put on my gown. And most of the time, you can either do this before you take the dressing off, or you can do it after you take the dressing off. It's whichever you prefer to do. But you should do it before you actually start your um, irrigating, because the whole idea is to protect your uniform or your scrub, whichever you're wearing. And I would have my face shield and my mask on, except for I'm talking to you. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put this on. We're going to go ahead and draw up our saline. Now, we want to keep all of this sterile here. And as we come down here, hold the basin as close as you can. The most important thing is I want to go from least contaminated to most contaminated. I hold my syringe approximately one inch from the source right here, and I just go down. And if you watch, I think you'll be able to follow me with this. Okay, we're going to go down. Now, when I start back up, I move around, go back up, and start. And it flows from least contaminated to most contaminated. I would not want to start at the bottom and work my way up, because then you've got dirty um, saline running back over your cleaned area. So go to the top, irrigate, and irrigate you see no more debris, dead tissue coming out of the womb. Okay, so it looks pretty clean now. We'll put this back, and all of this now will get tossed. That will be tossed. Okay. Now, at this point, I'm going to open these up, and these don't have to be sterile because what I'm going to do is clean around that edge, the outer edge, with the, which that is not sterile in itself at all, but we want to keep that peri wound dry. Since I'm standing this way, I'm going to start at the top, work my way around, throw this one away because I don't want to take and be going uphill, dragging over where the saline solution could come back down into my clean. Again, start and wipe down. If I feel like I need to wipe again, I would get another 4x4 four four out. Now, at this point, what I would do is clean this up. If I made really saturated here, I might even change this out. And then I would get ready to set up my sterile field to do my actual packing.